Oh! Ah! <laughs> Glorious! Doctor Who? <laughs> oh, he's under the dress. This isn't nearly as bad as it looks. <laughs> The personal interview hey. the unnamed doctor. I think it's an invitation. From who? It's not signed. Look, the card is blue. It's blue. <laughs> so early. First episode of series six, and I've got River Song again. <laughs> I love it. Says she's going to some planet called America. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere, middle of. Yeah, this is it. Howdy, <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> it's that fun. Husband. And Rory the Roman. Oh, <laughs> Rory the Roman. Oh, yeah. oh. Ah, cool. <laughs> That's gotta be River. Woo -hoo -hoo. Hello, sweetie. I've been running faster than I've ever run. And I've been running my whole yeah. life. Yeah. Now it's time for me to stop. Oh. Hello. Who's that? No one else can see it. Sorry, what? What did you see? You said you saw someone. <laughs> now, who's this? A delivery? Is it? To stay back. Whatever happens now, you do not interfere. Whoa. Whoa. Hello. It's okay, I know it's you. Well then. Hmm. Was that? Oh! I was gonna say, is that supposed to be River Song? I think it is supposed to be a river song, the whole killed a good man set up, right? Last series. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, so sh Of course not. She missed every shot. We do what the doctor's friends always do. <laughs> As we're told. There's a boat. Let's do it properly. Hmm. Put him in the boat, light him on fire, send him off. Wow, wow. Beautiful photography, look at this. Wow, this is some start to the series, folks. Now, of course, I know the Doctor isn't dead in the grand scheme of things, but there is a man who has some sort of Why did you come? connection to Same the doctor. Same as you. I won't be seeing you again. But you'll be seeing me. Oh, like a younger him? Sweet old man. Wow, folks, this is an incredible opening right here. <laughs> who did the doctor trust the most? <laughs> <laughs> this is cold. Even by your standards, this is cold. Or hello, as people used to say. But I'm always okay. I'm the king of okay. Oh, that's a rubbish title. The king right behind him on the door. <laughs> that's a good title. Hello, Rory. Oh, you bad, bad guy. Oh. What trouble have you got for me this time? Oh. Okay. How can you be here? <laughs> I was invited. The poke. Amy, ask him what age he is. Is it personal? Tell her. Tell her what He's going to say 900. Have we done Jim the Fish yet? Who's Jim the Fish? <laughs> I don't understand. I love him so much. Yeah, you do. He's interacted with his own past. He could rip a hole in the universe. He's done it before. And in fairness, the universe did blow up. 
There's a far worse day coming for me. Hmm. Where are we going? Home! Oh, well, you two are. Off your pop and make babies, and you Dr. Song back to prison. And me, I'm late for a biplane lesson. Make babies. I know you know, I can see it in your faces. Don't play games with me. Don't ever, ever think you're capable of that. You're going to have to trust us this time. Trust you? Why are you in prison? Who did you kill? Hmm? Pretty sure that was her. Now I love a bad girl, me. But trust you. Seriously. Trust me. Ooh. Swear to me on something that matters. Fish fingers and custard. Aww. Huh. Yeah, 1969, who's president? This is a personal matter. Yeah. Saw that in the prequel. Someone on the outside. You were my second choice for this, Mr. Delaware. That's okay. You're my second choice for president. <laughs> <the> next <laughs> no monsters, right? In the Oval Office, apparently. <laughs> Did you touch something? Just admiring your skills, sweetie. Good. I learned something. Okay. <laughs> Let's take it slow. He just showed up in. Yeah. Hello, the guns, really? I just walked into the highest security office in the United States, parked a big blue box on the rug. You think you can just shoot? They're Americans! Don't shoot. <laughs> no shoot. Don't shoot us either. Very much not in need of getting shot. How'd you get it in here? I mean, you didn't carry it. Clever, eh? Love it. Do not compliment the intruder. Five minutes. Five. Mr. President, I like him. Man is a Five minutes. Look at this. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. I just. Amy, what's wrong? Whoa. Amy? You alright? Uh, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little sick. Is Amy pregnant? Tell him what. What you must know, and what you must never know. How do you know about that? Tell him. Whoa. Surnames are three of America's founding fathers. Lovely fellas. Two of them fancied me. <laughs> you okay? Coping? You see the place in Florida, probably all of America, with those three street names on the same junction. And Dr. Song, you've got that face on again. What face? The he swap when he's clever face. This is my normal face. Yes, it is. Oh, shit. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> River, is that you in there? Shout if you get in trouble. Don't worry. I'm quite the screamer. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Oh God! Uh, I think she's just a friend. You okay? <sighs> yes, yes. I just felt a bit sick. It's the prison food, probably. Amy also felt sick, so maybe okay. she's not pregnant. Is this sensible? God, I hope not. <laughs> oh, you and the doctor. I can kind of picture it. Keep a lookout, impressionable young girl. And Suddenly, this man just drops out of the sky, and he's clever and mad and wonderful, and, and knows every last thing about her. Imagine what that does to a girl. Mm. I don't really have to. Huh. My past is his future. We're traveling in opposite directions. Right, right. The day's coming when I'll look into that man's eyes. He might. Yeah. Wow. And I think it's going to kill me. Hmm. Whoa. From the lodger. Really similar to that. What is this place? Someone tried to recreate a TARDIS or create a TARDIS. I just wanted to get married. Is that a crime? Yes. Doctor who, exactly. Uh, it's a crime, is it? That's classified. Classified by who? Doctor. I'm pregnant. Ah! Okay. Uh. 
It's a two-parter. Wow. Okay. How about that? Um, I mean, wow. Um, that is quite the series opener, folks. That is really flipping it on its head, isn't it? Um, I mean, a two-parter, right? A cliffhanger, a two-parter, uh, and it's quite the quite the first part for a two-parter. I mean, wow, wow. Uh, that is a breathless first episode. Right. Um, that's usually not the case. I mean, it's it's the first of its kind, essentially, um, for so many different reasons, of course. Um, wow. You know, I've got to say, first of all, I really, really enjoyed that. The noticeable thing here is that, of course, you know, that setup, uh, that intricate setup, you could you could just feel it. You could just see it playing out in front of you. Um, you know, some of the things that are being set up here, I'm so sure. Uh, that, you know, they're going to kind of play out over the span of this series and, you know, of course, uh, concluded by the end of this series and then, of course, once again, perhaps going into the next series, kind of leaking into Series 7 as well. Um, so, you know, I'm all I'm on board. I'm so on board for that because I really enjoyed that structure in Series 5. Uh, and, wow, you know, speaking of setup, there is so much happening in the span of 42, 43 minutes Wow. I mean, uh, I thought it was really quite uh, impressive. You know, maybe for some people it was a little bit too breathless, right? Because it just it comes at you, keeps coming at you. Uh, but I quite enjoyed that. I really did. And I feel like this type of episode um, is allowed because of all the, the buildup um, throughout Series 5. Um, you know, I've got to say I'm loving, I'm loving this TARDIS team so much, right? Um, now, you know, it's a distinct change, right, from the earlier days, like series one to four. And, you know, one of the things I really appreciate about this uh, new era, essentially, um, is the fact that the team um, kind of remains the same, right? Um, I mean, it certainly allows for that chemistry to build up. And, I, you know, great credit to the acting of all the actors that are in these roles, right? Um you know, they have some great chemistry together. Um, you know, all of them. You know, I, I keep bringing up uh, different combinations, right? Different combos. Uh, you know, I saw a new one that I really, really quite liked here. Um, Rory and River Song. You know, I mean, it's a poignant scene down below, right? Uh, it's an emotionally resonant scene. And the thing I really loved about the Rory and River Song uh, dynamic or the combination you know, he understands. He, yeah, he, he understands everything. Uh, it's a little bit different, of course, but, you know, this whole notion of this impersonable young girl and this man that falls out of the sky into her life, uh, a grand man, a tremendous man, right? Uh, you know, perhaps the most exciting man um, someone could ever come across. I mean, Rory's been competing with the doctor for a long time, long time, long before the Doctor actually returns to Amy Pond or Amelia Pond. I mean, yes, you know, Rory gets to marry Amy. Uh, and from the looks of it, from the sounds of it, they're going to have a kid, right? They're going to have a kid uh, together. But, you know, the Doctor is still this figure. He's still this grand figure in their life, in Amy's life. Um, you know, Rory might be Amy's husband, but he is not the Doctor. He's never going to be the Doctor. And that's okay. That's okay. But it's also a fact, right? Uh, no one can be like the doctor, right? Um, uh, so you see those lingering feelings are still kind of there. And, you know, I kind of like that. I like that, you know, they kind of focused on that again, right? Because it can't just magically go, right? It can't just poof, it's gone just because they got married. So I really like that Moffat still kind of had that in there, those lingering feelings. And then, of course, you know, River Song opening up about her relation with the doctor, uh, upon Rory's um, question, right? Um, yeah, you know, us, the audience, knows all about that, right? Because in her first appearance, um, 
yeah, that's essentially the thing she's describing here. You know, one day she's going to see the doctor, my doctor, and he's not going to have any idea who I am, right? And she believes that it'll kill her, right? Uh, again, figuratively speaking, uh, you know, kill her inside. But unfortunately, and again, it's quite heartbreaking, she does end up dying um, soon after meeting uh, that doctor, Tenant's doctor, the 10th. Um, wow. And, you know, speaking of those episodes, um, yeah, they, they continue to be so important, don't they? Um, and, you know, beyond just kind of going back to that, you know, the first time I see River Song is in a spacesuit, isn't it? She walks out, it's a grand entrance, and yeah, it's in a spacesuit. I mean, hell, there's even a Dr. Moon in that two-parter, right? Um, and there's even a little girl. There's even a little girl in that two-parter. Um, wow, wow, yeah. Again, I have no idea, you know, Moffat, I don't, I'm not even sure, you're gonna have to let me know if Moffat even knew back then that he is going to end up being the next showrunner. Right? Maybe they they might have had some kind of behind the scenes agreement, or I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't think I don't think he he, he even knew back then that he was going to be the next showrunner. Uh, in fact, you know, I've been told um, that they had no idea apparently that River Song is even going to return. So that in itself, you know, shows you just how fantastic that character was, that she was able to make such an impact, even though no one knew that she's going to make another appearance from that point on. Right. Uh, again, great credit to Alex Kingston and the writing of Moffat uh, and, and those two parters. You know, as I'm saying it over and over, you know, it just occurred to me silence in the library. Right. It's even in the title. Uh, perhaps it could be a case of Moffat kind of, you know, tracking back and using some of that terminology and using some of those ideas uh, and, you know, kind of uh, integrate them into his own uh, series run. But, you know, earlier I mentioned the, the first appearance of River Song um, being in a suit, in a space suit, essentially. You know, let's kind of link it to this episode. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that that is meant to be River Song who shot at the doctor. Now, you know, a thing... <laughs> let's Okay, let's just get into it, right? That's the shocking uh, first stanza of this uh, Breathless series opener. The doctor dies. Um... And gets quite a quite an emotional send off. I, I mean, pff, wow! I was kind of floored. You know, no, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna say I was just, uh, like, you know, extremely sad. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because I know, I know, you know, it's not like the last time I'm seeing the Doctor or anything. It's not the last time I'm going to see Matt Smith. Um, I mean, he kind of shows up on screen almost immediately right after in such a fun scene, of course. Now, see, the thing about that scene is he is dying, right? The doctor is dying. Hell, I see a regeneration, right? So to see Matt Smith <laughs> this early on, to be in that position, right? Actually getting shot at. Again, I firmly believe that is River Song because, you know, they've kind of already set up that she does kill the, the best man she's ever known. Um, back in the two-parter in series five as well. I think this this might be it. This might be the thing they were setting up in Series 5. So, you know, that in itself, uh, the fact that I do think it is River Song, to me, that almost immediately means that there's more than meets the eye in terms of that scene that's playing out in front of us or in front of the the, the companions or um, his friends. I mean, of course, of course, there's more than meets the eye here. You know, it's not as simple as the, uh, the doctor just dying there. Hell, there's even a possibility that after, you know, shooting at this astronaut, River Song kind of realized um, that there's a reason she's not able to shoot that astronaut, right? Or, you know, of course, there's also a possibility I'm overthinking it and it's bulletproof, right? Um, but you see she was quite shocked by the notion that none of the shots landed or did any damage. Again, there is a possibility that it's just bulletproof, but, you know, her saying, of course, um, maybe she realized, oh, okay, I cannot kill this person because almost as if the universe won't allow me to kill this person. I don't know. Um, but, you know, another thing, um, you know, as I'm kind of talking about there being more than meets the eye, there's some distinct setup by River Song herself in the last series, right? Um, that line of dialogue, the doctor lies. 
You know, I've got to keep that in mind at all times, especially for something like this, something so jarring, something so shocking, right? It is shocking. And of course, you know, Amy's reaction and Rory's reaction even, and of course, then River Song's reaction uh, after she sees him get shot mid-regeneration because she knows, she knows. Um, and, you know, it was quite, uh, her reaction was quite intense, right? Because at first she's holding Amy back, but then, you know, after she realizes, oh, he just got shot mid-regeneration. Wow, wow. Then she kind of, you know, she kind of lets loose as well. Uh, and unloads uh, at the astronaut and misses or bulletproof or something else is going on. And, you know, just earlier, moments earlier, minutes earlier, they set up that she's a damn good shot, right? Shot off uh, the doctor's hat as her introduction. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's something going on here. And I feel like this is going to be a part of a new series long uh, mystery, perhaps. Um, that's going to be sprinkled out, uh, you know, throughout this whole series. And again, perhaps beyond this series. Um, you know, th that's just one component of it. There's so much that's being set up here. Um, you know, let me go back to the cliffhanger ending, right? It feels like that shot is also not going to hit, right? It, it looks like they already kind of showed me because they showed me uh, Amy shooting and then they showed me a glimpse of the suit and the person inside happens to be a young girl, right? I mean, as of this point, I still believe, I still believe that astronaut, the one who shot the doctor in the beginning of the episode to be River Song, right? That's like my almost airtight, you know, uh, take it to the bank uh, thought on that or prediction on that. It's not really much of a prediction, really, because there's so much setup for that already, that being River Song, right? Um, but here you have this young girl in the suit. Uh, I, you know, I don't think at all that <laughs> Amy's going to land that shot. Even if, she, even if she is on target, I don't think it's going to do any damage, much like how River Song couldn't do any damage to that astronaut. But another thing that's quite noticeable here is the timing. I think the timing of uh, the revelation to the doctor uh, doctor, this is important. I need to tell you now. Um, I'm pregnant, right? Um, and almost immediately after that, there's a young girl being shown. That is something I should put a pin in, right? That is something I should take a note of and keep in mind. I feel like I need to see part two of this. Um, and you know, the thing is, isn't it crazy how the opener um, of series six is essentially uh, a series finale? It has a feel of a series finale, doesn't it? A two-parter series finale like this episode and the things that are playing out you know the doctor dying essentially these are the types of things you expect from the second last episode the penultimate episode right then setting up the finale the grand finale of a series i mean this is kind of like i said flipped on its head you know let's just kind of go for it uh though of course uh there is a there is an element of again pardon the pun blowing your load a bit too early <laughs> right there could be an element of that uh, now listen, yes, I expect some not so great episodes. That's just kind of how things are. You know, you cannot, you cannot have this caliber of episode throughout an entire series, right? You just can't, right? There has to be a few uh, stinkers, right? Series five had a few stinkers, so you know, I'm not saying I'm expecting this caliber of episode throughout the series. I am expecting a few, you know, six out of tens, essentially, um, maybe five out of tens. But I'm also expecting some 8 out of 10s, a few 9 out of 10s, and a few 10 out of 10s, you know, and good signs here because I feel like this opener is one of the best. I really do feel like this is one of the best of New Who uh, from the stuff I've seen so far. And I, I really do think the TARDIS team plays a major, major role in that. And of course, Matt Smith. I mean, at this point, surely at this point, everyone's on board. Everyone's on board. Uh, Matt Smith is the doctor folks. This is, wow, I adore this dude. I adore this man in this role. Um, you know, maybe it's more of like a preference thing as well, but you know, his brand of humor, his mannerisms, um, it's it's so up my alley, right? I mean, there's this moment. It, it's just him simply just kind of, you know, he's got this big smile on his face, big goofy smile on his face. He comes out and, you know, I'm speaking of him having the straw and he's just like, He's just pointing at them. He's got this goofy smile. He's pointing at them. And that had me just laughing, you know, because I love that. 
about him, his mannerisms. Um, he just continues to impress so much. He's made this role his own. And of course, you know, he continues to kind of juggle the whole manic, uh, you know, goofball nature, man-child almost. Um, and then on, on the other end, right, in a split moment, the sinister genius that is the doctor as well, right? The, the line delivery, the delivery of that dialogue in the TARDIS, right? As he kind of sits down, he's got his hand on his forehead. Do not play games with me, right? Don't don't think you could ever do something like that, right? Or you could never succeed at something like that. A lo something along those lines, but wow, wow, right? You know, here I am just giggling and, you know, fist pumping at how funny this dude is and how up my alley his mannerisms are <laughs> and how much I love the guy. And then there in the TARDIS, just like that, just like that, sinister genius, right? Um, super serious. And of course, not sinister in the sense that he's evil or anything, but, you know, you, you buy it. I buy it. I buy that shift in tone or tonality. Um, wow. You know, I love I love him in this role. I really do. Uh, and I'm so happy I still have this entire series and perhaps many more to come. Again, I'm not sure if if he... I mean, I know for a fact I'd get Series 6 and shortly Series 7 as well, right? 3 at least. Um, but I'm not sure if, if his last season is 7 or 8, right? Maybe I don't want to know. Maybe I don't want to know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not going to look that up. And, you know, I spoke of River Song earlier and I, I spoke of the chemistry these characters have or these actors have of course River Song and the Doctor Alex Kingston and Matt Smith you know I love the banter love the flirting uh it's really being amped up it's really being amped up you see the Doctor is so much more open to um River Song um though of course there's a bit of a heartbreaking moment as he confronts her um and kind of questions the validity of her trust or her request for trust right um, you see, right? The shot kind of lingers. It's out of focus, but it lingers on River Song. And you see how much it hurts her to see this or to have a bit of distrust in her, right? Yes, it's realistic. Uh, and it makes sense from the doctor's perspective as well. Um, but you see, it hurts her. And again, that's one of the reasons I really appreciated the Rory and River Song scene down below. Um, because she kind of gets to speak of her feelings because you really don't get that often. Her opening up about her feelings, right? Her connections to the doctor, uh, the whole Benjamin Button-esque nature of it all. And there is yet another thing that Rory can uh, understand, right? That notion of someone that you care for, love so much, uh, and you've known for a majority of your life cannot even recognize you, right? I saw that. I saw that at the tail end of series five in the two part finale, right? Um, Amy not recognizing uh, Rory the Roman. Uh, and that must have been heartbreaking for him, right? So again, that scene, I thought that was a really fantastic pairing for sure. And you see Rory feels for her. He, his perspective changed after hearing that story, right? And her thoughts on it all. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, Rory, <laughs> please tell me he didn't just die again. <laughs> you know, there's that zap. Um, the zapping was quite similar to Joy getting zapped in the, the toilet or in the washroom or the bathroom at the Oval Office. <laughs> um, you know, speaking of zapping, let's speak of the monster. Um, wow. Uh, you know, it's a, I think it's a great creature design. Uh, really creepy. I mean, the suits... Now, them being in suits actually makes it even more creepy, really. <laughs> and that kind of even reminds me a bit of Men in Black, right? Uh, them kind of making you forget. But here, you know, it's a really unique situation, isn't it? You can only remember them as long as you're making eye contact or you're looking directly at them. The moment you get your eyes off of them or, you know, the moment you kind of lose that attention or focus, you know, they're gone. A figment of your imagination. Not even that, right? It, it, it leaves you with this uneasy feeling that, you know, you're forgetting something or you're trying to remember something, but you can't. You know, all of us know that feeling too. That's one of the reasons it, it kind of resonates, doesn't it? Um, trying to remember, knowing in your mind that, oh, just a moment ago, I was thinking of something, something really important, but I can't quite remember now. 
right? You know, is that a, is that a case of that happening right at the end there? You know, Amy thinking back to, oh, I have to tell the doctor. I have to tell the doctor something really important. You know, instead of the, the creatures, um, you know, she remembered something else, right? Something else that was important and her, her being pregnant being that important um, thing that she wanted to share or tell the doctor about. And of course, you know, Amy is the one that's being affected by this quite a bit. Um, she was kind of the one that was singled out earlier in the episode as she saw one of them. And then later she kind of remembered. She was having flashes um, to that moment, right? At, the, at that beautiful picnic they're having. Uh, quite a cinematic shot. I mean, in that sense, I love the grand nature of this episode. I, you know, I actually love the setting of this episode, 60s um, America. And I've got to say, I really enjoyed the limited appearance character uh, or companion, essentially, right? For these two episodes, I guess. Uh, Kenton, Kenton, right? I mean, the actor is putting on quite a, <laughs> quite a specific, you know, accent. Uh, it's quite a gruff, and kind of really, uh, you know, hard-boiled accent he's putting on in comparison to some of the other Americans that are clearly um, part of the cast as well. Of course, you know, you have Nixon, who I saw in the prequel, right? No monsters in the Oval Office. <laughs> so my guess is he's probably not American. Um, the actor playing Kenton. Um, that doesn't matter though, you know, it's not even a nitpick. I'm just kind of mentioning it in passing because I liked him. I really enjoyed that character and I hope I see much more of him in part two as well. And I'm sure I'll get, you know, some uh, closure on some of the setup from episode one. And then, you know, many of these plot points are going to continue throughout the series. And then again, beyond series six as well, right? I've seen, I've seen the structure at this point. And like I mentioned in my series five finale reaction or the discussion portion, you know, Moffat really excels at long form storytelling. And I'm sure I'm going to see a continuation of that here in series six as well. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm here for that. I'm here for that. And, you know, I mentioned uh, some of the cinematic scenes and um, moments earlier on as well in the episode. Uh, of course, you know, uh, the send off, the burial, uh, the burning of the body. Wow. And again, the photography there is just wow. Um, uh, it's quite striking, isn't it? Um, yeah. And, you know, it kind of continues that trend. Uh, since the 11th hour, right? The photography um, and the visual look taking the next step, essentially. You know, I've said a few times now that it's kind of taken a step towards modern photography at this point, the look of it. Uh, and I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying that. And of course, you know, you could tell that some of these are location shoots in the States. So that's that's really cool as well. And of course, once again, I do have to mention Murray Gold's incredible score, right? Come on, man. Just uh, the man is just phenomenal. But yeah, you know, it looks like uh, the doctor wanted them to go to that point in time. He wanted them or needed them to go to 1969. And of course, you know, they made it quite clear that the moon landing um, and the moon, right? Something's going on here. Something's going on here. You know, it all kind of comes into play somehow. Uh, but them being there is all part of the plan, right? Or he wanted them to be there. Uh, the doctor that is, the one that died, right? The one that's um, 200 years older than the doctor us, the audience knew, um, uh, and Amy and the companions know, right? The, the age was a major talking point here. Um, of course, you know, they explained it. You know, it's not, it's not really a mystery because they almost immediately explained it that it, is, that it is a future doctor, of course. Again, you know, <laughs> the difference in age and all. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, more than meets the eye. You know, I think that much is clear. And for that reason, you know, this part two is perhaps one of the most excited I've ever been to get to part two of any episode in Doctor Who. Um, you know, I really quite enjoyed that, folks. I really enjoyed that. And, you know, great signs that it's going to continue to have that emotionally resonant, uh, beautifully layered, um, intricate setup. Um, throughout this season as well, or this series as well, you know, full of compelling and exciting ideas, right? So yes, 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 this has been quite excited, folks. Right then, I think that's about it for this one. If you enjoyed that, uh, if you really enjoyed that, right, please do consider dropping a like. It takes a split second and it really helps out the channel, right? It really does. Um, and of course, comments, um, right? Give me your thoughts. That also helps out the channel, you know, the algorithm and all that. 
Um, but yeah, you know, your input, your engagement, uh, if you legitimately enjoy this stuff I'm putting out, it helps. It really does help. Um, so, you know, consider all those things. Uh, you know, if you're interested in full length or early access to the next episode right now, you know, consider checking out the links in the description and the pinned comment for the Patreon page, right? Um, and also I'm on social media, if you're into that, Twitter specifically. Um, again, links in the description, pinned comment. Right then, that's it for this breathless first episode of Series 1, Series 1, Series 6. Really quite excited, folks. Really. So I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take it easy. Thank you.